welcome to uh, this MOOCs on basics of finite element part 2. Uh, this is uh, a MOOC course, it is an online course and in this course uh, each week we will be having uh, assignments and at the end of the course we will be also conducting an examination and both these assignments as well as uh, the examination they will be objective in nature. So, most likely there will be multiple choice of questions in both of the, the assignment as well as in the final exam, but uh, that does not mean that uh, detailed understanding and working of uh, uh, whatever I will be talking about and teaching in this course uh, will not be uh, required for you to do good in assignments as well as uh, the examination, uh, because uh, the questions will be crafted <clears throat> in such a way that you will have to work through the entire procedure and then come up with some answer and it is the answer which will be objective in nature, but uh, you will be uh, to get uh, a, the correct answer you will be uh, required to, to go through a series of steps and uh, absorb and use whatever I teach in this course. Now. <coughs> Uh, this course is 8 weeks long, uh, each week we will have 6 lectures, each lecture being something like 20 to 25 to maybe 30 minutes. So, from Monday till Saturday uh, we will be having these lectures and uh, close to the end of the week you will also be getting an assignment and there are deadlines for assignments. Uh, so, uh, uh, please make sure that you stick to those deadlines it will make our job easier. Uh, uh, in this particular course, uh, there are three uh, teaching assistants. So, I will write down their na names. So, the teaching assistants are uh, Rahul Urath and his email ID is Rahul O at iitk dot ac dot in. Then there is another teaching assistant. So, these gentlemen will be helping me in conduction of this course. So, the second assistant is V Srijit and his email id is v s s r e e at iitk dot ac dot in. And the third teaching assistant is Dev Satsangi and his email id is satsangi at iitk dot ac dot in. So, if you have any questions or uh, doubts uh, you can directly communicate with these people or you can also post them online uh, on the forum, so that others can also know what doubts you have and we will try to respond to those questions as soon as possible. So, that is about uh, overall logistics of this course. Now, uh, what is this course all about? So, in the last semester we had taught uh, basics of finite element method part 1 and in that uh, uh, what we had done was we had dealt with several uh, uh, concepts. So, we started with uh, solving and developing finite element equations for 1D problems and then different types of 1D problems, uh, uh, heat conduction problem, uh, a bar under tension, beams and then we also did uh, time dependent problems. So, if you have a bar and it is being pulled and pushed. So, it is a time dependent problem. So, we solved uh, developed finite element method formulation for time dependent problem and also for Eigen value problem. And in the first part the whole part was oriented in such a way that a person with any background uh, with a or let us say with a reasonable background in mathematics or engineering uh, even if he or she is at uh, uh, second year on his uh, curriculum. Uh, he or she could uh, take this course with sufficient ease and uh, do well in this examination. So, this particular course basics of finite element method part 2 is essentially 
a continuation of that course. So, we will be starting from where we left in that particular course. <coughs> so, that is how we are going to start and what is it that we are going to cover in this, this course. So, the first topic we are going to cover in this course is that when you do a finite element analysis, you uh, have to make a lot of approximations uh, as to how displacement varies across the domain or temperature varies in the domain and so on and so forth. So, because of these approximations, the so your finite element solution is somewhat different than the exact solution. So, there is an error. So, we will discuss approximation errors. And then how do we uh, measure these errors and quantify them. So, they are measures or metrics. Okay. The second thing we will talk about is numerical integration. So, what we uh, learnt in uh, the last course part 1 was that uh, we develop uh, residues uh, related to partial differential equations or differential equations and we integrate these residue over the domain of the element and then we equate this value to 0. And the way we integrated in the previous class is that we have a function and then we just use that function and uh, use our understanding of integration uh, to integrate it uh, analytically. But when we implement this thing on computers, it is probably easier and faster to do these types of integrations numerically. So, we will learn some tricks as to how numerical integrations of uh, functions could be conducted uh, and that will uh, uh, and that is actually used in a lot of finite element uh, uh, programs. Then the third thing we will do is uh, 2D problems. Now, these 2D problems are in a way fundamentally different than 1D problems in terms of how we assemble element level matrices and also how we impose boundary conditions. So, moving from 1D assembly process to 2D assembly process, it requires a little bit of uh, conceptual expansion. So, we will do these 2D problems and uh, once we are familiar with how 2D in 2D problems uh, uh, assembly of uh, element level equations is conducted and how are uh, boundary conditions applied. Then moving from 2D to 3D is uh, pretty much mechanical. Uh, the same idea can be used for assembling 3D uh, to solve 3D problems. And in 2D problems, we will address two types of problems. One is one variable problem. For example, you can have a plate and let us say here in part of this plate, I am specifying temperature let us say is equal to 100 degrees centigrade and in another part of the plate in this zone, let us say I am specifying temperature is equal to 0 degrees centigrade and all other surfaces of the problem. Uh, outside surfaces or edges of the problem, I can assume that they are insulated and I am interested in finding temperatures at all these individual points in the plate. So, here I have two dimensions, one is the x dimension, the other one is the y dimension, but the variable in this problem is only one which is temperature. So, this is a two dimensional problem which involves one variable which is temperature. So, we will start our 2D problems by understanding, uh, by solving uh, those problems which involve only one variable. Then once we have learned that, uh, then we will uh, move to 2D problems with multiple variables. So, 
So, an example of uh, this uh, multiple variable problem could be again a plate okay. and let us say I am now here instead of temperature I am interested in finding displacements. So, let us say I am on this plate part of the edge I am pulling and I am applying a force F suppose and let us say this edge is rigidly clamped and it could be another thing that here in this particular at this particular point uh, P I am applying a displacement not normal to the edge, but at some angle. So, I am some applying some displacement let us say delta at an angle theta and here the question is that okay, if this is the situation of the plate what. So, here again this is a 2D problem because it has two dimensions x and y and what I am interested in finding out is that at all these inter in, uh, points inside the problem or inside the domain I am interested in finding the displacements. So, let us say I am interested in finding the displacement in x direction let us call it u and here in the y direction it is v. So, in this case the problem is two dimensional in nature, but it is having not one variable, but two variables u and v. So, this is a 2D problem with multiple variables. Okay. So, we will solve one variable problem and we will solve a multiple variable problem in this case. So, this is uh, uh, about the 2D problems that we will be covering and then uh, we will briefly cover 3 uh, 3D problems. Uh, so, where will the object in consideration will have all the 3 dimensions and there could be multiple a single variable uh, like in case of uh, thermal study or there could be several variables for instance in cases of uh, deflections we may want to in find out all the three deflections or uh, u v and w. So, this is what we plan to do in this uh, course and uh, this uh, completes the discussion for today's lecture what we will do in the remaining part of this week the uh, is uh, that is in the next five lectures is a quick overview of uh, all the stuff which we did in uh, the earlier course which is basics of finite element part 1. So, with this uh, we close the discussion for today and I look forward to meeting you tomorrow at the same time. Thank you very much. Bye.